There's a nice new enhancement to the file browser where we can bookmark our own custom locations to have them appear as shortcuts here. So for example, let's say I'm navigating to here and I want to have this one appear in my shortcut bar there. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go bookmark logic 10.4 explained. And now I've got a permanent location there so I can jump to it the way I can jump to the other locations. So that's how we add or bookmark these folders. And if we want to remove it, we can right click and remove the bookmark. Now we have another type of bookmark and that's for something called the untagged loops browser. And let's talk about that. Now let's go to the Apple loops library. And first thing you're going to see is a new icon at the bottom. And when we audition one of the loops, we get a waveform display at the bottom. Now there's another new function related to the loops browser here and the all files browser. And that's called the untagged loops browser or untagged loops tab. So what this is, is a way of sort of housekeeping any old loops that you have, maybe from old CD libraries or loop libraries that don't have metadata in them, but you still want to use them. It's a way of organizing them and having them accessible from within logic. So the idea is that you can drag one or more of these untagged loops into an untagged loops tab that we're going to show you how to create in a moment of the loops browser. And when you do this, the loops will be added to a special untagged loops folder on your hard drive. Now you can also manually drag loops and folders of loops into this folder that's on your hard drive. And once it's added, the untagged loops will always be available to any project using this folder. So there's a couple of ways of creating and adding loops. First thing we can do is go to the file browser. And I'm going to navigate on my desktop. I have a folder that I've created here with a couple of loops from loop CDs that maybe I want to use. So I can right click on that. And we can, of course, create a bookmark like I just showed you a moment ago. But we can add to the untagged loops. All right. So it's going to add it to there. And now if I go back to my Apple Loops browser, we're going to see this new tab here called untagged loops. And there it is. So that's one way of adding. And another nice new addition is that you can right click and from the preview menu, choose if you want to preview the loops at their original tempo or at the project tempo. Now, another way is simply drag and drop. We can drag and drop either a loop or a folder of loops right into the loop browser, either within one of these nested folders or right here at the root level. And of course, we can right click and remove a folder if we want. The third way is to do it manually in the finder. And here's where we see the untagged loops browser in your user folder in music, audio music apps, untagged loops. And that got created now when I added it in from the all files browser. And you can see that it's created an alias to the folder that I had on my desktop. So it's important that you add them in the locations that they're going to be because aliases will be created here. So they need to be accessible and the aliases need to know where to find them. So just to recap. You can add loops to your untagged loops library by dragging them in here in the finder, or you can drag and drop in the untagged loops tab of the loops browser within logic, or you can right click in the all files browser and add to your untagged loops library there. Now I suggest you start your first time by doing it in the file browser, just so that it creates this untagged loops folder for you in the right place and right location with the right spelling. If you want, you can create it manually here like this and then drag and drop from the finder. So a couple of different ways of dealing with it. So that's the new file browser bookmark feature and the new untagged loops library.